It is impossible to look at the early classes of NASA astronauts and not see that they are all Protestant white males. So today on Fidget Space, we are talking about the little known story of Edward Dwight. Edward Dwight was a U.S. Air Force pilot who was earmarked personally by President Kennedy to be the first African-American astronaut to join NASA's Corps. Now, it must be said that Dwight's appointment was very politically driven. The Kennedy administration wanted to get away from this idea that NASA's astronaut corps was exclusively Protestant white males by bringing in an African-American pilot who had all the same qualifications as the early astronauts. Now, remember in the late 1950s when NASA started looking for astronauts, the criteria was very selective. Candidates had to be male in the military having graduated from a test pilot school and have a certain number of hours of jet aircraft. They also had to have advanced degrees in a field of aeronautics or engineering, something relating to experimental test flying that would eventually apply to spaceflight. This is extremely limiting criteria. Added to that, all of the health and the weight and height requirements dictated by the small size of the Mercury spacecraft, only 110 men in the country met the basic criteria to be an astronaut when NASA put out the first call in 1958. When the Mercury astronauts were selected in April of 1959, they were the lone seven who passed every single test that NASA could think of to throw at them. In large part because criteria for military pilots was also so severe at the time, there was no diversity in NASA's astronaut corps. Kennedy wanted to change that, and so he handpicked Edward Dwight to join the astronaut corps. Dwight was a pilot and aeronautical engineer with a degree from Arizona State University. In 1961, he joined the test pilot training program at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Dwight passed the class and eventually began training as an astronaut candidate, but was met with severe racism at Edwards from both his peers and those in charge of the program. And when President Kennedy was assassinated in 1963, Dwight's dreams of flying in space died with him. In fact, the pilot sees Kennedy's assassination as the reason he never went into space. Lyndon Johnson, who took over the presidency after Kennedy's death, also agreed that diversifying NASA's astronaut corps was a good idea. However, he did not want Dwight to be that astronaut. Instead, he earmarked Robert Henry Lawrence Jr., another Air Force test pilot, as the man to join the space program. In fact, Lawrence was actually selected as an astronaut in the third group for the Manned Orbiting Laboratory Program, the U.S. Air Force's spaceflight program based on the Gemini capsule. The MOL program was canceled in 1969, and seven astronauts from that program were transferred to NASA as Group 7, but Lawrence was not among them. He was killed a year earlier in a jet crash. Dwight retired from the Air Force in 1966, and after a few failed business ventures, became a very celebrated and well-respected sculptor, something he is still doing today. The next group of NASA astronauts selected after the MOL transfer astronauts was in 1978, and this was the first group of really diverse candidates. Among them was Guillaume Bluford, who became the first African American in space on August 30th of 1983 as part of the STS-8 crew. The history of spaceflight is a deeply rich technical one, but it is also fascinating from a human perspective. What are some of your favorite human elements of the space program, or little known astronauts that you would really like to know more about? Let me know in the comment section below, and as always, leave your questions and ideas for future episodes in the comment section as well. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space for nearly daily Daily vintage space type content. And with two episodes right here going up every single week, as long as my schedule allows it, usually on Tuesdays and Fridays, be sure to subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.